Hey everybody, welcome back to another video of Astro Carpets. In this video, we're going to be um, doing a tutorial on how you can get a um, Hubble pilot looking image out of a one shot color camera and a dual narrowband filter. Um, and uh, yeah, this was this Rosette Nebula was shot with a ASI 294MC Pro and the Optalon L Enhance filter, and as you can see. This is the natural color of the nebula. It's red. We got some um, grayish red over here, and we got the dark nebula as you see. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can get a Hubble looking image out of the one shot color camera as you see here. This is calibrated, the color calibrated, noise reduced, and some other features I did in Pixit Sight. And uh, yeah. So you got to make sure that your image has been stretched. It cannot be linear again. But uh, yeah, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just extract the channels and I'm just going to see what's going on here. So as you see, here we have blue. I'm just going to call it B. Here we have green. I'm just going to call it G. And here we have red, which is the HA. So I'll just call this HA okay so once you have extracted all the channels um, we're gonna combine them but how do we do that we're not gonna use LRGB combination some people think that you can just use LRGB combination to get your image well you could but you're not gonna get any O3 at least that's not the way the method I'm gonna teach you guys the way I do it is I combine R and I'm sorry I'm, I combine G and B into one image and I'm gonna call that O3 and the reason I do that is because the Optilong L Enhance splits the O3 channel into G and B, which is green and blue. And the way we get them both together is by um, using pixel math from a formula I've learned from Quig the Lazy Geek. And uh, shout out to his channel. He's done a pretty good job on explaining a duo narrowband filter processing. But uh, yeah, so this is the uh, formula I'm going to use. And um, yeah, so let's go and write down the formula. So the formula is G times 0.7 plus B times 0.3. And the reason we do 0.7, we do more on G is because we have more signal on G rather than we have on blue. So we all like the blue is always the uh, most noisiest image as you can see it here. It's really noisy, but the green is it's in the middle point. So um, That's why we do green a lot more than blue But we still have some blue we have 0.3 of blue. and then once you do that um, You're just gonna create a new image and you are going to do um, Same as target we're going to do a grayscale because it is a grayscale image and then just click apply. Okay, and here we have our O3. As you see, it produced a new image. And I'm just going to minimize pixel math. I'll, I'll let you guys know why I did that later. But here we have the O3. I'm just going to recall this O3. And I'm just going to minimize G and B because we don't need them anymore. Well, at least we don't need them right now. And I'm just going to put them aside. Um, and right now we have the HA, we have the O3, we're missing the S2. If you want to make it SHO, you have to have also have an SO, S2. So the way we get the S2, well, since the Optolong L Enhance or any dual band filter doesn't produce an S2 because the S2 is just a weak channel of HA, um, you kind of have to go ahead and fake it out. So the way I do that is I just take the color image, the RGB image, and extract the luminance layer. That's it. I just call that S2. I know it sounds weird, sounds crazy, a little stupid, but you know, it does the job for me and I like to do it a lot. So I'm going to recall that luminance layer S2 and we're going to minimize RGB, put it aside next to uh, above green and blue. Okay, now we have these three images. We have HA, O3, and S2. So you can use LRGB combination, but again, like I told you guys, it's not going to work that way. And with a dual band filter, 
you're gonna have to use pixel math and that's why I minimize it and didn't close it so in pixel math what you do is you have to turn off the use a single RGB slash K expression and re um, rewrite R slash K as S2 um, green we're gonna worry about that in just a little bit blue of course it's SHO so blue is 03 and last but not least green we're not gonna just put HA because HA has like if you guys compare um, HA to 03 you can see that 03 is barely there than HA so the HA is the strongest of course so the the thing we're gonna do here is that we're gonna do HA times 0.7 plus 03 times 0.3 so that's the way I do it it works really good um, so we're giving it some 03 as well because we do want that 03 to pop and that's the main image to get a Hubble palette to get that 03 out so I kind of did uh, 0.7 on HA and 0.3 on 03 so this does the job don't worry about that unless your 03 is really bad and maybe you can do HA 0.5, 0.3, 0 0.5. You just kind of have to play around with depending on the signal to noise ratio of your image. But uh, yeah, so for my image, this works the best. So I'm just going to go with this. And then once you do that, create a new image. Make sure the color space is RGB color. You want a color image. And just click apply. And it's going to run. And you're going to get this. Okay, we're going to close pixel math. We're going to minimize s2 ha and o3 we're going to put them aside so that we're only looking at this image here so i'm gonna recall this sho and notice that magenta in the background like you see this magenta here there is a way you can get rid of it um the way you can get rid of it is by doing control invert and you can just run scnr to get rid of that magenta so open scnr apply it and it has gotten rid of the magenta so if you do if you invert it back we're gonna get something like this where the magenta doesn't exist anymore and you have a neutralized background which is pretty fantastic now we're gonna worry about the image notice how it looks green and sho it doesn't really look green it kind of looks goldish like the ha is gold o3 is blue yeah we're gonna have to fix that right now so again i'm gonna run scnr get rid of the green here and as you see we are left with this kind of not saturated gold-ish color it does kind of look gold but we kind of have to bring it out it, it kind of looks like a black and white image but we kind of have to go ahead and bring out the colors bring out the saturation of this image so what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask so we're going to go to script utilities color mask right there and then we're just going to click on yellow and then we're just going to um, do one layer of blur. So here we have our yellow mask and what we're going to do is we're just going to apply it to the image and minimize the mask because we don't need it for now and hide the mask because we want to see what we're doing. Okay so at this point once we have applied the mask we are going to go to curves and open the real-time preview and get the saturation up notice how it looks gold now that's what i was talking about to y'all um getting the saturation up is the key of getting that gold color and i think i'm gonna do that much i'm not really gonna go crazy on this i don't wanna make it that um it hurts people's eyes when they look at the image that looks pretty looks really gold we don't want that we want less gold here so i'm just gonna maybe just a little bit here and let's see before and after yes that definitely did an improvement apply that and i'm done with bring it out the color of the saturation and right now it looks gold it looks pretty good so once you do that you can just remove the mask by going to mask and clicking on remove mask and here notice there's no o3 it's because it's hiding behind the ha so the way we bring out the o3 is by creating an o3 mask so the way we do that is we just open the o3 
So the reason I'm using star in it is because we don't want the stars to exist in the image. We just want to work with the nebulosity. And notice how the um, stars, when they get removed, the nebulosity just starts to pop out, especially in the O3. And that way we can use the range selection mask tool to create a good mask and apply it to the image so we can bring out the O3 as it's the blue. So let's go ahead and let this run and I'll get back to y'all once this is done processing. Okay, so Starnet just finished processing and as you see the O3 starts to pop out a lot more. Notice how there's like a lot of stars here hiding the um, the, the, the nebulosity is being hidden but um, when we do Starnet it just brings out the, a lot of nebulosity which is really nice. You can see a lot of O3 in there and what we can do with this right now we can go ahead, go ahead and make a range selection mask. So the way we do that is we just open range selection, um, click on the real time preview and mess around with this till we have something good. So the O3 is not that strong, um, at least with three hours of integration time, it's not that strong. So this is looking like the image here. Um, maybe this is looking pretty good. And then what you can do is you can give it some fuzziness, maybe not, maybe a little bit of fuzziness and give it some blur so you can blur it out. And once you do that, you can, or well, not going to blur it that much. And then once you blur it out, you can just click, click on the triangle and drag it and drop it on the O3. And then once you do that, you get this right here. You can just apply it to the image and you can go to curves transformation tool and go to the blue channel and raise that up and notice how you get the o3 yes that's what we we're talking about before so the way we can get the o3 really pop it's a little tricky but it's doable um you're just gonna have to go ahead and play around with the sliders with the curves um so we're just gonna apply that first one as you see it gave us some uh, it gave us some bluish color but again we're gonna have to go to blue channel bring that up notice that we get some magenta that's not 03 we're gonna have to go ahead and decrease the red by a little bit give it some cyan and repeat this process for a little bit until you're satisfied with the image again maybe I'll give it a little more blue don't want to make it look that bad okay so here we are I just finished doing curves transformation and this is what I ended up with of course this is not the best I have done I have done way better than this but for the sake of the tutorial you get the idea of what we were trying to do so um, yeah so you can rewatch this video as any time as you want because it's a tutorial and um, it basically was trying to help you understand how you can get these Hubble Pilot looking images out of a one shot color camera and a dual band filter but um, this is nowhere near a true color a true Hubble palette image taken with different filters S203 and HA with a monochrome camera but um, it's still it's still kind of there you know we get the O3 but this is not the best mask I've ever made you can kind of see the HA here but um, it definitely just shows you how you can go to make a Hubble palette looking image out of a one track color camera be sure to subscribe to the channel as it would mean a lot to me but uh, yeah Hope you enjoyed the video, learned something, and as always, clear skies.